Hello. It's 12 o'clock. Thank you for that. I'm going to play Stanley Parable because I haven't played it yet and it seems really interesting to me. I don't really know what it is. So I just know it's something about decision making. So we're going to begin the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. How cool the clock works. Is that just me though? Is that a bit fast? It looks like he's doing it two seconds every one second. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Where are they? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Don't know where the meeting room is. Now from these doors. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> I touch everything. Um, I'm not going to touch everything. I'm going to touch everything, but but one thing. I'm not going to touch the cup. No That's matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I'm going to stop looking. <laughs> Maybe you just got come for the door. They said the demo kind of played. I did play the demo. Oh, don't do that. I did that. I don't know where to go. Guessing just follow the doors. No. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Obviously I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour it's after running. all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <sighs> it's a nice room. But I don't feel like I should just stand here drinking it all in because he said I did. Yes. Really. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, I want to go back. I'm not eager. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> mean? Can you not open any doors then? 
Where is everybody? Look, Stanny, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. No. <laughs> Not all of this. Should have gone the way. That is scary. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the and red, door. red door. Obviously, I would chose red because it's my favorite color. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running no and one running, else in the just the way door. you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? What is happening? I, just, I wanted to stop. He I would... We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think... Well, what? I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. What the flip? <laughs> it's identical. That's creepy. Where did the... Where did the... That is so weird. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? This is getting weirder and weirder. What? There's just lights it. What is that? What's all these lights? Oh god. Here. Whoa. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, all right. right in this moment with this place, Stanley. I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. No, wait. Where are you going? Right. Ooh, Where colors. were we? No. <laughs> this is so interesting. Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. <laughs> no! Oh. oh. Thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? No, 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 what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Yes, perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself <laughs> from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Oh. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy trip. if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? Frog colors. So what do you want me to do? Can we jump up? Ah, oh, no. No, perhaps not.
what am I meant to be doing? There's no other way to go. <sighs> Looks like I'm jumping off here again. Oh, hang on, there's a door. No. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I just wanted us to get along. But I guess just that was too much to, to ask. Area. <laughs> it looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Is it over? It's going oh. to restart, isn't it? I'm I didn't going think that was going to happen. No! <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I got them right by this time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This seriously reminds me of Portal. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Oh, no. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason Happened at all. Again. None of it made any logical the sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? The? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. <laughs> oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What then he the imagined man? himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was what? so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so like that in real life. And then perhaps the strangest question of the all does. entered Stanley's head. One he was She's amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? 
Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Everything will be fine. Stanley Stop began there. screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. So confused. <clears throat> oh no. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so we're gonna go from the left door before he says it. <laughs> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ha! You didn't want to do that time. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This looks so strange 
Why would there be an office looking like this? <laughs> There's just nothing outside. The emptiness. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark okay. secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss oh, had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Ooh. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> know it. Now. <laughs> Loading, 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 Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Headwind games don't let you jump. The hell? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door Mind. that read Mind Control Facility. Escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. What? No, you're lying. You're lying! The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. You're lying! At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Oh. Oh. Um. What do I do? What do I do? Oh my god. Geronimo. Oh. <laughs> he wasn't lying. Oh, he might have been. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, oh, God. he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bit of picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned oh and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly what? into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. That's not what happened. What? The Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office no. as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? 
When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? What? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? That's weird. <laughs> Credits. Okay, let's go through here. Did I do the correct thing then? It's like a museum. I feel a bit lost with the narrator. Do I do I go for the exit? Do I keep looking around? There's buttons. Beep. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, I just turn the light off. No, I think. perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose.